Hi, my name is Adam Roy. The following is a video submission to Capital Stage Company, Sacramento. Today I'll be playing the characters of The Porter and Malcolm from Macbeth. Hmm. Here's a knocking indeed. Well, if a man were porter of Hellgate, he should have old turning the key. Oh, knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, here's a farmer who hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come in time. Have napkins now about you. Here, you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, Faith. Here's an equivocator that could swear on both scales against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator. Knock, knock. Faith, here's an English tailor come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Oh, come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Anon, anon. I pray you, remember the porter. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir. We were carousing till the second cock, and drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. Oh, and what three things does drink especially provoke? Mary, sir! Nose painting, sleep, and urine. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but it takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. Hmm. It makes him, and it mars him. It sets him on, and takes him off. It persuades him, and disheartens him. Makes him stand to, and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir. Let us seek out some desolate shade and weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men bestride our downfall and birthdom. Each new mourn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face, that it resounds as if it fell f with this damned earth. Now what I believe, I'll wail. What I know, believe, and what I can redress, as I shall find time to, friend, I will. What you have spoke, and it may be so, perchance, this Tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. Now I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me. And wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. Now why in that rawness left you wife and child? Those precious motives, those strong knots of love without leave taking. Bleed, bleed, poor country, great tyranny. Lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness dare not check thee. Where thy wrongs? Mm, be not offended. I speak not as an absolute fear of you, I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. Now all it weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think withal there would be hands uplifted in my right. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, 
or wear it on my sword. Yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow. Not in the legions of horrid hell could can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. Well, I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, no, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. No, but there's no bottom, none to my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust. And my desire, all continent impediments would o'erbear that did oppose my will. Now better Macbeth than such a one to reign. Homeless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. There hath been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and fall of many kings. But fear not yet that we have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. With this there grows, in my most ill-composed affection, such a staunchless avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands, nor desire his jewels and the other's house. And my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper, grows with more pernicious root than summer seeming lust, and it hath been the sword of our slain kings, yet do not fear. All these are portable, with other graces weighed. Oh, but I have none. The king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, no patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime, acting it in many ways. Nay, had I power, I should uproar, I should pour the sweet milk of conquered into hell. Now uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Thank you.